Welcome to our viewers in Grenada, Caracol, Pidi, Martinique, the rest of the Eastern Caribbean, the diaspora, and around the world. We're starting the countdown to the second Grenada Invitational. And as we can see in the opening montage, the drama, the suspense about to unfold in St. George's in April. And uh, this is a special program you will be viewing every week, updating you on all of the action around the countdown to the Grenada Invitational 2018. So welcome to our program and welcome to our guests. We'll be going to them in just a bit, just to let you know our guests on this premiere program. Uh, the chair of the LOC, Dexter Mitchell, chair of the local organizing committee, and also organizer Michael Bascom in studio with us. And of course, we'll have other information uh, from the launch and, and, and uh, a lot of discussion on. So stick around with us on this special program as we count down less than 100 days to go. Grenada Invitational 2018. And for those of us who were there at the National Stadium for the first ever event, the Grenada Invitational, well, the images, I would imagine, are still fresh in our mind, whether we saw it on television or whether we were at the National Stadium. We'll kick off with a good reminder for you, a Safa Powell in this 100-meter event. Let's enjoy it before we go into the discussion. Well, maybe we'll see one of those fast times you've been looking for all night. We've been waiting for it all night, and right. I know we've had some complaints that the track is a little hard. Let's see how these guys go here. So, Safa Powell in lane four. And Asafa Powell with a good start in the middle of the track now coming up. Asafa Powell beginning to pull away, looking over, and he <laughs> takes the victory with a little bit of drama. Okay, I think we can officially say that we have not seen some of the fast times we expected. That was a flash time of 10.15 for Asafa Powell. That might be his 200th best time in his career. Yeah, because nobody's been under 10 more than him. Is that correct? That's right. Nobody by far. He's, he's going to cross 100 sub 10s this year. It just won't be tonight that he continues that progress towards 100 sub 10. Well, the big stars were in Grenada. And of course, we saw Asafa Powell there. And um, lots, of course, he was almost like a Grenadian, um, how he enjoyed that race, Asafa. We have with us now, uh, let's introduce them, the chair of the local organizing committee, Dexter Mitchell, and Michael Bascom, organizer. Gentlemen, welcome to this premier program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Raul. Thank you for having us. All right. Well, is it less than 100 days to go? Um, how are we now? What's the reaction? What's the response? That I know it's early days to, to some extent, but then time flies. Um, well, I, I must say, um, you, you've frightened me and, and Bascom <laughs> does the updates of, you know, it's, it's, it's 100 days to go, it's 90 days to go and so on. And, and every time you hear the number, it gets a little bit more frightening. Mm -hmm. You recognize how quickly the time has come upon us again. Um, it seemed uh, as though it was just yesterday we had completed the inaugural Grenada Invitational and now we are at it again um, in 2018. Um, I must say, however, all that, that things are going very well. Um, I think we are about 80% um, mm -hmm. complete in terms of planning for the actual day. Okay. Um, lots of interest, are, are obviously, from athletes wanting to come back to Grenada. And um, in, in a few days, we'll be making some announcements. I know there's a lot of excitement as to who is coming, who will be returning, who is coming for the first time, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so some names will be released next week. Um, we are in constant negotiations, obviously, with sponsors, our sponsors from last year, our partners, and new partners coming on board. Mm -hmm. um, and just continue to, to tighten some of the loose ends in terms of the organization, things that people would not have seen behind the scenes that we have to we have to fix um, to make the invitational even better than it was in in, in 2017 mm -hmm. um, so so far we have the full LOC on, on board re, full contingent returning in 2018 mm -hmm. and and plans are going extremely well and mm -hmm. I can promise Grenada like we promised last year mm -hmm. a world-class event 
with world class athletes, um, something that we can all be proud of. All right, Michael, your comments on this? And certainly not just the, the athletes and uh, officials who have been showing that sort of interest from last year, but mm -hmm. we have a number of Grenadians, and I can speak probably from the diaspora point of view, um, mm -hmm. who have been expressing interest in uh, returning for the Grenada Invitational. Obviously, for, for those who were there last year, uh, the experience was, you know, as they put it, was awesome, you mm -hmm. know, and f for them, they cannot miss it. In fact, you hear some of them telling you already mm -hmm. that um, they have their tickets already. In fact, they would have booked the flights. Mm -hmm. um, they would have bought their tickets online. So it's just a matter of them waiting for the time. Mm -hmm. So every time you send out something regarding the Grenada Invitational, they will want to remind you right. that, listen, I'll be there okay. come um, April 21st. Well, I can tell you, I mean, last year I met so many Grenadians overseas who I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. So you get the impression that what they do is that they plan and um, around that. And obviously that is why they would have to, because they have their lives out there, so, so they would want to know early. early. So I guess the word has gone out to them early, even before. Full, uh, right. at local it's, level. It's, it's almost part of their, 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 their calendar. Yeah. Every year now they look forward to something as a Grenada Invitational, not mm -hmm. just to come home and be among family, but just something that they can enjoy, be, being around Grenadians, um, track and field, as you know, over the years. Um, it's been a very you know big sport in mm -hmm. Grenada. We look at the, the, the intercall, for example, mm -hmm. and we see the sort of support, obviously, with the Kirani James factor and things like that. So yeah, there is this new excitement, this new momentum in terms of track and field. And, mm -hmm. Um, just to bring these international stars every year mm -hmm. to the shows of Grenada, um, it, you know, is, is a big feeling for a lot of Grenadians, and they just want to be there to be part of, right. be part of that. Um, I mean, we had last year. Everybody's talking about last year, Dexter and Michael, and this is the second event. I think. Um, um, people would have been pleased for more transparent last year in terms of the quality of athletes, the quality of the event. Well, I know behind the scenes it's, it's a lot to <laughs> organize, quite massive. But in terms of the lessons learned from, lessons learned from last year and um, uh, to, to, to carry into the second year, how, what sort of lessons we would have learned from last year's inaugural event? Um, I, I, I think um, just uh, the main lesson would be that of negotiations. Mm -hmm. um, being able to get um, what you want at the, at the right prices and so on. So even in the conversations with the athletes, um, even understanding the value of the invitational to, to sponsors and prospective sponsors, um, but not not anything major, not any major lessons. There are things that we want to improve on. There are okay. things that as an as an organizing committee, as the management of the invitational that we are not pleased with and that we would want to tighten up on. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there are some minor things that will make the, the overall look of the invitational um, even better. Um, one thing I can tell you, for example, is that we will not be using the vinyl banners around the facility on mm -hmm. the day of the event, we'll be using electronic boards, right. which can project the images of the sponsors better. Mm -hmm. Aesthetically, it will look a lot better. It is more manageable and more controllable and so on. So just those things that probably right. um, would be minor to the average fan, but mm -hmm. collectively it would add to, to a better quality event. Um, but just improving our efficiency, improving mm -hmm. the quality of, of, of the service to the customers, right. to, to the people who are coming into the, into the stadium, and just ensuring that the athletes continue to have a good time. I right. think one of the successes of the Invitational was the fact that the athletes were able to come to, to Grenada and enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. They had a fantastic time, mm -hmm. and that was one of the major selling points in getting them back and getting others who've heard about the experience to come to Grenada. So we, are, we have to maintain that and increase that, that experience a bit more. Well, if I can see in terms of lessons, Rol, um, I think we have demonstrated um, that as Grenadians, you know, we can pull off an international meet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a lesson. Um, it is a lesson, I should say, and um, I, I think we may have doubted our ability in terms of Grenadians, because mm -hmm. when you look at the local organizing committee, um, the volunteers, you know, the, mm -hmm. all the stakeholders who are involved, it shows, Roll, that if we work together and we continue to work together, you know, that we you know, we, we can be on the big stage, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of organizing uh, major events. I mean, barring, you know, the Olympics and all these multi, you know, um, discipline, um, you know, sporting activities. But I am saying that we have demonstrated mm -hmm. that as a small country, as a small um, nation with just about 100,000, mm -hmm. um, we have the ability to organize 
and to execute right. international sporting events. The positioning of the event, mm -hmm. um, comment on this as well, because it seems to be a lot of, a lot of athletes now looking for it as a season opener. It Very is. early in the season, it's season. right there. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that from last year now, mm -hmm. they would have it in their mind yeah. and they would become calling for this as a season opener. Yeah, well that, that's, uh, and the, the technical people will tell you that, that mm -hmm. um, the athletes look forward to that because um, it, it gives them an opportunity for, mm -hmm. for some of the athletes to know where they are in terms of their preseason preparation and getting mm -hmm. into the season. Um, so you'll find sometimes an athlete who is, um, you know, uh, a quarter miler. They mm -hmm. probably want to open with a 200 meters to mm -hmm. see where they are. I mean, they're very competitive in the two as well. Because right. these days, you're running a 400, you have to be like a sprinter, right. you know. So um, the, the, the Grenada Invitational, as you term it as a season opener, mm -hmm. gives that, it gives them that ability, it gives them that opportunity, I should say, mm -hmm. to um, position themselves into where they are for the season and also for those who are looking to get into other international meets mm -hmm. because it is an opportunity for them outside of the Diamond League and those other, the Drake Relay, the Pen Relays and these things. Here is an opportunity for them to probably stamp their approval to mm -hmm. confirm their presence on the, for, for the outdoor season. Mm -hmm. Cuba, I know this year, a big thrust for the Cuban athletes um, uh, because, you know, Cuba is with us in the Caribbean, Spanish speaking and so on. Um, I know this is a, is a, um, a top priority. Um, comment on, on the, the, the presence of Cuban athletes. Um, well, I would want to start off by saying thank you to Ambassador Clarice Charles. I mm -hmm. think she has been in constant contact with Bascom about the involvement, uh, the participation of Cuba in the Grenada Invitational. I got to meet the former ambassador here in Grenada, um, mm -hmm. the Cuban ambassador to Grenada, and she was at the Invitational last year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she enjoyed herself, and she thought that Cuba needed a presence also. So we did the exchanges of, of communications with the Athletic Federation in Cuba. They have accepted the invitation. In fact, they have ex extended an invitation to the LOC to visit Cuba to have some more talks with the Ministry of, of Sport mm -hmm. um, to discuss technical exchanges and assistance and so on. But a delegation from Cuba, a, de a delegation of world-class athletes from Cuba will travel to Grenada for participation in the Grenada Invitational in 2018. All right. And um, while the focus is on, uh, you know, a lot of the international athletes come, I think a lot of people have also been commenting on the fact that the effort is made to put local athletes coming out of the school system on that platform to um, comment on that as well in terms of the importance of that um, with young ones coming through the secondary school system, rubbing shoulders with the international ones that they would see on the international screens. Well, I, I think when even when, when uh, two years ago, uh, a year and a half ago, when, when Bascom and I was discussing the makings of, of, of a, a Grenada Invitational, um, one of the things that was high on the agenda was the development of track and field mm -hmm. so that the event would lend itself to some form of development, not mm -hmm. just hosting an event one day and, and then we close up shop. Mm -hmm. So um, when we met with the technical people, in, um, Colin Peters, Bruce Swan and so on, one of the things that had to be done was the showcase of local talent on mm -hmm. that international um, platform. Um, the opportunities to be on, on, on international television, the opportunities to mingle with international athletes to see some of the behavior patterns when they get ready for events. Um, how do they go about warming up, you know, right. stretching and so on. And, and the local athletes having that opportunity for that intermingling, having some regional and, interna and the international coaches and agents look at the local talent. Right. Um, and we are very hopeful and expectant that in years to come, the Grenada Invitational will allow for the production of more than just Kiran There will mm -hmm. be a lot more superstars coming out of Grenada, Olympians, mm -hmm. world champions coming out of Grenada because of the efforts of the Grenada inter International uh, yeah. Invitational. And, and the modus operandi in terms of these um, international track meets is having the local presence. So right. whether it's a Diamond League, yes, you will see the Diamond League on television from 2 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. but, you know, from 12 o'clock, they have kids competing. Compete, you know? yeah. So <coughs> that's the whole focus of having these international events, invitational events, also showcasing your local talent because the idea is that 
two, three years from now, these local kids probably will be in the elite section uh, right. competing and they have that presence already. Okay. You know, that state of mind. Um, getting little tips uh, because sometimes they get the opportunity to even, um, as they say, rub shoulders with the elite athletes during the warm-up session. Mm -hmm. You know, they see how they start, they get little tips and things like that. So, okay. And for some of them, it's an opportunity even to, you know, take photos and, you know, and s speak to them and, you know, and th somebody might have been their mentor, for example, or the idol in terms of track and field, mm -hmm. and they get to meet them as well. Very much so. <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break now. Our guest is Dexter Mitchell, chair of the local organizing committee, Michael Bascom, organizer. It's uh, less than 100 days as we count down to the second Grenada Invitational. The stars around the world are coming to St. George's. Welcome back as we come down to the second Grenada Invitational uh, scheduled for right here in St. George's. April 21st is the date. Bear that in mind. Now, we've already had quite a lot happening as we build up to this event. Last year, leading into the Christmas uh, holidays, we had the official launch of Grenada Invitational 2018. And one of the persons who spoke, Kwame Hippolyte, of the Grenada Athletic Association. Let's listen in. Grenada Invitational is considered as part of the area permit meets uh, of the IWF. A few years ago, the IWF started naming area permit meets. Now, NACAC saw it very important to get on board where we can try to access funds to assist meets of the Grenada Invitational. So NACAC, given the mandate from the IWF, will award the franchise for the area permit meets to the national governing body, that of the Grenada Athletic Association. And these, these organizations will in turn sanction and permit the organization of area permit meets at the local level. That's where Mr. Dexter and his hardworking thing, and I'm Glad that he is able to bring forth the persons who are normally working in the background, who oftentimes do not get the recognition that is needed. So that's where we have the organization of the Grenada invitation at that level. We continue to, and with this year, with the early move by the um, invitational committee to start the preparation of the event. We sanction the meet, we sanction the Green Invitation because we see the meet can have a significant impact on the development of athletics in not only Grenada, but the region. The Grenada Athletic Association is prepared to make the Green Invitational area permit meet all that is reasonable, all that it can be, and to ensure the success of this meet. Well, thank you very much, the Kwame Hippolyte of the Grenada Athletic Association uh, speaking at the launch of the Grenada Invitational 2018, the area permit meet um, and so on. He was explaining that point. Put it into perspective for us so we could understand because um, this uh, Grenada Invitational, um, my understanding, it's sanctioned. It's, yeah. it's a quality event because yeah. it has the blessings of yeah. NACAC and so on. Yeah, well, you, you, it's like getting permission, yeah. right? So it's sanctioned by the local Mm -hmm. body, which yeah. is the Grenada Athletic Association, mm -hmm. and then um, also will be sanctioned by NACAC, which is the Area Association, mm -hmm. Governing um, Associations, uh, Athletic Federations, North America, Central America, and Caribbean, which is under the IWF. So a NACAC mm -hmm. um, area permit meet is basically an IWF approved mm -hmm. because they're representing the area. And what it does also as an area permit meet with the sanctioning, well, to be an area permit meet, it means, therefore, that um, 
times and distances recorded mm -hmm. will be officially recognized. Yeah. For example, for a world record, mm -hmm. you know, if it's not a sanctioned meet, it will not be recognized. Right. You know, um, pending ratification, drug tests, all these sort of things like that. So it means that you have that opportunity. So most of the the events or the the times and distances at the Grenada Invitational would have been, for example, established as the Invitational record. Mm -hmm. So from 2018 which is this year's event it means then athletes will be looking to lower the record for the uh, you know mm -hmm. and it is also form part of the NACAC record right. um, database mm -hmm. it means that if there is a particular time or distance or whatever it is that was recorded at the Grenada Invitational they will look at it to see if it's now established a NACAC record for example okay. the area record and things like that so that is all part of the sanction and ensuring mm -hmm. that the meet is at the meet adheres to all the rules and regulations um, of the IWF. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, there will be like a NACAC delegate to ensure that the, the hotel, the stadium, all the various aspects of, um, you know, putting on an invitational mm -hmm. meet, an international meet mm -hmm. adhere to. And therefore, it has the stamp of approval of okay. not just the Athletic Association, as said, but mm -hmm. also NACAC slash IWF. Right. And just to add to what Bascom said, um, in 2017, mm -hmm. the 400 meter record for the Bahamas was set in Grenada by Stephen Gardner. Oh, yeah, Gardner. Chris Brown record. And that could only have happened because it is an area permit meet where it is recognized by NACAC and the IWF. Right. Okay. And um, Gardner actually seemed to have blown up after the Grenada Invitational. Um, uh, there again, we're looking at Grenada Invitational as a platform. Right. To, 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 so, to sort of blood new talent and give persons more international exposure. In fact, his, um, his winning time here yeah, mm. was the time, the world leading time, actually going into um, mm. some of the meets in the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, it was his personal best, it was as the national record and all these things um, mm. um, at the time. And um, it also had that effect because most of his, um, most of the press clippings mm -hmm. and media interviews post the Grenada Invitational when it comes to Stephen Gardner had a reference to the Grenada Invitational. Right. You know, um, they did an end of year um, interview with him and mm. there's an entire paragraph referring to the Grenada Invitational. Right. It just shows you how much it, 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 you okay. know, it, it helps in terms of the athletes. In mm. fact, for some people, the Grenada Invitational provided him that platform for even the Diamond League. Okay, you know, I see. Because mm -hmm. he, was on the, on, uh, he was on the circuit, mm -hmm. and I'm certain that the, the time that he put on here at the Grenada Invitational right. was that, that attracted okay. that sort of um, mm -hmm. interest okay. by meet organizers around the world. So the NACAC sanction, and just coming back to it briefly, um, linking with the IWF is important in terms of the quality of the event. I guess you'll have to follow certain protocols to right. maintain a certain quality. And in addition to that, it's mm -hmm. also what some of the agents and mm -hmm. athletes will look for, mm -hmm. you know, because once they see that um, NACAC IWF mm -hmm. um, sanctioning, uh -huh. they know that the quality, you know, is at what actually they expect. Okay. Not just an invitational, mm -hmm. but an area permit meet. Yes, invitational, mm -hmm. but a sanctioned invitational okay. with the status of, of an area permit meet, mm -hmm. meaning that times, distances, whatever it is, mm -hmm. will be recognized by the IWF and the okay. NACA. That's the difference there. Yeah. Okay, stick a pin there, guys. We're taking a quick break as we count down to the second Grenada Invitational. We'll be back. Welcome back as we count down to the second Grenada Invitational and uh, the launch took place in December and one of the persons addressing the launch, the sports minister himself, Anthony Boso. This year's Invitational was what we call a gentleman's agreement between the Grenada Invitational Incorporated and the government of Grenada as a major partner. But we do believe that this is too big to remain just as a gentleman's agreement. And therefore, we have agreed to, although not yet receiving the approval of cabinet, that there should be 
an established memorandum of understanding between the Grenada Invitational Incorporated and the government, outlining the various rules of the respective partners. So at least there could be no misunderstanding and there could be a smooth running off of subsequent events. We at the Ministry of Sports and the level of government do stand ready to give the necessary support to the local organizers to ensure that the upcoming Invitational in 2018 will be yet another bumper success. We also look forward to receiving our friends from the People's Republic of Cuba as participants in this very important global undertaking. Right, that's Anthony Bolson, the sports minister, commenting on the launch of the Grenada Invitational that was um, back in 2017, just leading into the Christmas um, season. One of the things he spoke about, and you heard him, they mention a memorandum of understanding, and he's saying the magnitude of the event is more than just a basic agreement um, between the government and the organizers. He is saying it should be elevated to a memorandum of understanding where terms are clear and support systems are clear. Gentlemen, comment on the importance of this. Um, well, it is important, and um, Olvaska would speak to the comfort level of broadcasters and athletes and so on. Mm -hmm. But just in terms of, of for our structure here in Grenada, mm -hmm. um, to be able to facilitate the, the invitational, there are some things that have to be, to be in place. And of course, government is going to be a, a very significant partner. They are the ones who ultimately own the, the airport. Uh, the airport authority, the stadium authority are all subsets of, of the government of Grenada. Security. So to have security, the, the RTPF and so on. So to have that smooth working relationship, um, we thought it was, while it, it went very well in, in 2017, but to secure the future of the Grenada Invitational and, and to make sure that we don't have to revisit some of the same things over and over, we thought it was important to establish uh, some parameters for how we work along with the government of Grenada mm -hmm. um, in terms of making the the process smooth mm -hmm. so that we don't have too many hiccups and, and you know how those things get um, especially when it gets close to to the event mm -hmm. um, you call in certain departments and, and people are not clear on what their roles and what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. but the MOU clearly spells out what should be done and who should who is responsible for what and so on the role of the Ministry of Sport for example mm -hmm. the role of the airport authority the role of the stadium authority as I mentioned before mm -hmm. and so the government has been very cooperative as, as Minister Boson outlined and we are very grateful for the assistance that they have provided in 2017 and looking forward to a, part, a growing partnership over the next three years. Mm -hmm. And it also gives that level of comfort, you know, as mm -hmm. um, the, when you're doing the application for the, you know, the APM, for mm -hmm. which is the area permit meet, it's one of the areas you have to address, you okay. know, the level of um, um, participation of the state, right. you know, um, the involvement of the state, mm -hmm. because it provides that level of comfort. Even broadcasters, for example, they mm -hmm. will, once you're negotiating with them, they'll want to know where the state involved in these sort of things. Right. The agents, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they will ask the same question, you okay. know, um, what involvement is the state in that? Because there's this level of comfort when the state is involved. Right. Um, you know, there's sort of reassurance, as Dexter pointed out, in terms of the um, the involvement of, you know, the security, the, mm -hmm. the airport, the st facilities, you know, all these facets that, that will make the the invitational you know what it is okay. so um the, the 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 memorandum of understanding provides that level of comfort and and in most cases you know you you sign an mou probably mm -hmm. three four f five years you know so some something that could be sustainable okay. for a period of time all right mm -hmm. we're heading towards the wrap gentlemen um the issue of the impact as well i guess the, the state has to be involved because of the rippling effect of, of an event of this nature you're talking about pe persons coming money spending they have to stay somewhere they have to eat somewhere the whole involvement the, tr tr the trickle down effect um uh, as we can imagine um uh, i guess you a quick comment from you on, on that i mean i, I remember um, i think we had certain events like west indies versus um england here and then we had the barmy army invading mm -hmm. river road was like little england <laughs> 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 and that sort of thing yeah you know well i think um well just off the bat, some very hard co-figures um, would be 
the stadium authority reported that in 2017 there was an, a 20% increase in visitor arrivals in April of 2017 over okay. April 2016. Okay. But in moving forward, one of the things that we I, are going to do is to have an economic impact assessment done okay. to determine the value of the Grenada Invitational to the Grenada, Grenada and econ economy. Um, to show exactly the benefits, as you, as you mentioned, the trickle down. Who are the persons affected positively? Mm -hmm. um, what are the benefits? Um, how can those benefits be expanded or increased? Um, mm -hmm. Michael spoke of the persons from the diaspora. How do we reach out to more persons? Mm -hmm. How do we increase that 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 intake from from outside of Grenada? Regional participation, as far as visitors are, and, and so are concerned. How do we make sure that the persons here in Grenada mm -hmm. sufficiently benefit economically from the Grenada Invitational? Mm -hmm. So that assessment will be done, um, if not in 2018, certainly in 2019, mm -hmm. to determine the value of the Grenada Invitational to the economy of Grenada. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, I'm not even sure, uh, um, even when you do that, you'll get the true yeah. you know, impact. Well, eh? you the, know, yeah. it's, it's more like you a guy. a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, because mm. you don't know, even mm. though, for example, the Tourism Authority reported a 20% increase around that period, mm -hmm. you don't know what happened even after that, you okay. know, that area that they were looking at. Mm. So the, the, the study impact is a very important tool mm -hmm. that will give an idea, because mm -hmm. only recently, for example, the Caribbean Premier League mm -hmm. reported that... Um, for 2017, that's the 2020, mm -hmm. you know, close to what, 100 million um, US dollars, mm -hmm. the impact for the Caribbean, yeah. you know. So certainly um, the idea of a, uh, you know, a economic study impact for the Green Invitation, I think, will go okay. a long way. Right. Something that is welcome. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for dropping by. We're going to take a final race before we're up. Michael Bascom, organizer, and uh, Dexter Mitchell, chair of the LOC, as we count down to Grenada Invitation. We take a quick final comment from you when we come back, but we're going to feature this race with our own Rondell Bartholomew. I think it was a B race. Um, uh, let's take a peek at that. And despite the noise, a fair start in the men's B section of the 400. And as you mentioned, Otto Rennie Quow of Trinidad and Tobago in lane five in the center of the track. But look at the nice move in lane six from Ariokin, third from the outside. But this is Gardner who has seized control wow. of this race. And in fact, this is no longer a race, gentlemen, because Stephen Gardner, unless he loses a shoe or something, is going to win. And he is going to win this B final by a very large margin here, Chris. Yes. What do you think about looking at Steve Gardner wow. coming up so strong there? Well, he's in great shape and great form. You know, he's looking very good. Um, I'm very impressed to see what he's going to, the time is going to be. 44.25, are you kidding me? Okay, that was uh, Steve Gardner there. Um, and of course, we know what that race meant to him, but we were, we were he winning, but of course, uh, we were all supporting and pushing our boy, our hometown boy, Rondell uh, Bartholomew Day. Gentlemen, just a few more seconds to wrap up. Dexter, Michael, final quick comments. I just want to encourage persons. Uh, we had a dilemma last year where when we said tickets were going very fast and tickets were selling out, people thought it was a marketing gimmick. <laughs> I'm cautioning again that the tickets have gone on sale since the 30th of November. And even from an organizer's standpoint, we are surprised at how quickly the tickets are selling. Mm -hmm. So I'm encouraging persons to please go get your tickets. They're available um, at grenadainvitational.com or go to fed.com. You can buy it on the online pa platforms or the outlets, Venus Restaurant, mm -hmm. Grenadian Optical, GT Free Caribbean, and so on. Max is mm -hmm. in Granville. But mm -hmm. please purchase your tickets if you want to be at the stadium on the 21st of April. Yeah, purchase your ticket, but just remember that the Grenada Invitational belongs to Grenadians, so we mm -hmm. all have to embrace it. Right. And we're looking forward to your support. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That's a wrap. Thanks to the team. We'll be back every week giving you all the updates on what's happening as we count down to Grenada Invitational 2018. Whether you're across Grenada, across the Caribbean, or across the world in the diaspora, we'll update you. Stay with us.